Hello and welcome to another edition of Pico TV's How To series. This time we're going to be looking at the Wheels Materials Packs and we're going to be building a diorama from scratch. Uh, now normally I, you hear my voice and I'm delivering all the, the, the voiceovers. This time I'm working with my colleague Josh and we're going to be building this diorama and putting down the track, putting down the ballast building the platform literally from scratch using just wheels materials packs kits uh, and the ones that we're going to be looking at are the victorian stone paving we're going to be using the new tactile platform pavers uh, the gabion cage walling and the herringbone block paving so we've got a good selection of different types of material sheets to work with there and a few other bits and pieces will be sprinkled in now in the second part of the film we'll also look at some other kits that we're going to be using to just complement the whole of the diorama and just bring the whole thing to life and give it a bit of you know feel and a bit of realism but um so there we are that's what we're going to be doing today and i think we better get started don't you definitely yeah a lot let's go do. we are basing this diorama around a beautiful country platform station in scotland loosely depicting mora we hope to capture the character of this nice station platform for this diorama build we will require the right tools to do the job and we will be using both the PT100 track layers tool set and the PT200 kit builders tool set. We will also be using poly cement, super glue and PVA glue. We will also be requiring various paints but these will be different depending on what you wish to build on your own layout. To start off Josh removes any rough burrs and edges from the platform edging kit then he glued them together to the desired length. Then we took the base of our diorama and covered it with cork and laid a length of track using the track setters. We've done our best to replicate the curve at the end of the platform as found at Mora in the west coast of Scotland. In order to get the platform to follow the contour of the track, we will be using the steam of a kettle to gently warm the plastic edging and bend it into shape, checking all the time that it fits. But mind you, don't burn your hands on the steam. Using some plastic sheet, Josh creates a substructure to support the top of the platform. We are using the SSMP 199 corner fillets to help give the platform more strength and help form a 90 degree angle. Then he glues just behind the leading edge of the platform the tactile platform pavers, cut into strips and again gently snipped to match the curve of the platform. Next, I take the platform and position it next to the track and look at creating contours in the ground around the platform. I achieve this by using polystyrene and a surform to create the contours and gentle elevations. Once I've created the shapes and forms I need, I glue them in place using PVA glue and cover them with a coat of tissue paper and more PVA glue to give them a hard protective shell. Then I leave it to dry. Then I take the platform and spray it using grey primer to give it a shade closer to concrete, which I will weather later on. I also spray the top of the platform and give an undercoat to the platform pavers. As I continue with painting, Josh starts creating the gabby and cage walling. He cuts the sheets into strips of the required length and bevels the edges to create a half box and then brings them together also covering the ends. After a little while and a bit of trial and error, it looks like this. Next I painted the platform and applied a thick coat of PVA glue from behind the tactile pavers and up to the boxes which will define other structures on the platform. Then carefully sprinkling all over the top I used the red rusty powder from the Pico track bed weathering kit to resemble the red gravel found on the platform at Mora. I also continued painting all this landform with a dark acrylic umber to simulate soil. 
The next job is to add the cable trunking. Start by putting a thin line of super glue in the position I wish to place the cable trunking. Then firmly press the base into the glue and hold for a few seconds. However, not all the trunking around our network is straight. So you can gently snap across the lengths at the joins and put small bends which add a bit more realism. When the super glue has dried, you can paint an appropriate color. Again, I've taken my rough color base from photographs and colors of concrete that are depicted in that part of the country. Once the paint has dried, it's time to ballast the track. I'm using the PS315 fine grade weathered ballast, which has a brownie ready color appropriate for the region. You can use a teaspoon or a track ballasting tool like I am here to apply the ballast. You can also use a ruler and a paintbrush to help keep the edges of your ballast tidy and also where you want it. By tapping either the spoon or the handle of a paintbrush on the rail, it makes the ballast that's sitting on top of the sleepers bounce off. Then test it with an old wagon to make sure the flanges don't hit any of the ballast. When ready, I have a mixture of 50-50 watered down PVA glue with a little bit of washing up liquid in it to help break up the surface tension. Then I use a pipette to apply it liberally all over the ballast. I turn my attention to finishing off some of the painting on the platform edging before leaving it to dry overnight. Now everything is dry, Josh begins work on the car park surface behind the platform. He has cut out strips of the new wheels material sheets, herringbone block paving, making sure the brickwork matches between the different sheets. All that's left for me to do now is fill the rough stone wall flower trough and complete the first phase of the diorama build. As you can see, many of these elements are starting to come together quite nicely. In the second part, we will be looking at installing the Wills Modern Level Crossing and scratch building the station building and finishing off with a little extra detail, greenery and so on to bring the whole diorama to life. So we look forward to seeing you again on part two of the diorama build.